If you don't have any wines from Priorat, Spain in your collection, you should definitely change that. There's some absolutely stunning wines being made, and it's a very special region. I recently visited Priorat and met with a number of top producers. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my insights about Priorat and also giving you six specific wines that I recommend that will help to get you started. These wines start at about $35 to $40 a bottle and go up from there. So there should be something for everyone. To fully appreciate Priorat, it's first necessary to understand a bit of history. Back in the late 1800s, France was being ravaged by phylloxera. There were very few vineyards that were surviving phylloxera, and so France had a huge shortfall in grapes. So among other things, they looked to Priorat to provide some of the fruit for the wines that they needed. As a result, Priorat was a thriving wine region with more than 42,000 hectares of vineyards, and everything was going extremely well for Priorat. However, within about 20 years, phylloxera hit Priorat and devastated the region. The phylloxera devastation in Priorat was severe. Many people fled the region, and most of the vineyards were simply abandoned. All that was being produced for almost 100 years in Priorat was modest amounts of bulk wine. In the 1970s, however, a group of visionaries, led by René Barbier Sr., began planting new vines and reinvigorating old vineyards. In 1989, this culminated in the production of a commercial wine. They did not have enough fruit to produce their own individual wines, so what they did is these five or six families came together and they produced one wine collectively, but then they bottled it separately under their own label. Astonishingly enough, within 10 years, wines from Priorat were again highly acclaimed. Shortly thereafter, Priorat became only the second wine region in Spain to receive DOCA status, which is referred to as DOQ in Catalan, the other region being Rioja. However, even today, Priorat DOQ has only about 2,000 hectares planted under vine. When you drive through the region, you can still see evidence of many vineyards that were long ago abandoned. Priorat is only about 90 minutes to two hours from Barcelona. It's fairly close to the coast, however, there's mountains that shield Priorat from some of the coastal winds and rain. For that reason, it's extremely warm. It's a bit of an amphitheater, so it gets extremely favorable sun exposure and very, very little rain. The terrain is extraordinarily rugged. Now, although Priorat is extremely warm, there is wide diurnal range, which means that there's a big difference between the daytime and the nighttime temperatures. Evenings get very, very cool. That's especially true in some of the more elevated areas. Vineyards are planted on steep slopes called costers. Priorat is famous for its Licorea soils. What is Licorea? Well, it's a type of slate, oftentimes blue slate. It's very, very hot and dry and infertile. The lack of water and nutrients results in extremely low yields for the grapevines. For example, at Valley Yacht, they have a Mas de la Rosa vineyard, and I was told that it takes the fruit from seven vines to produce just one single bottle of wine. In addition, many producers farm organically and or biodynamically, if not entirely, then at least to the extent that they can. This further reduces yields. What kind of grapes are used to make wine in Priorat? Well, when you're talking about reds, you have to start with Grenache and Carignan. These two grapes handle the heat in the rugged climate of Priorat extremely well. To some extent, it's analogous to the southern Rhone region of France, except in Priorat, there's greater elevation and also a wider diurnal range, and so these grapes tend to get more acidity in Priorat than they would in the southern Rhone region of France. You also need to talk about Cabernet and Merlot when you're talking about Priorat. However, many of the Cabernet, Sauvignon, and Merlot grapes are being phased out by producers. The Cabernet and the Merlot vines were planted back in the late 1980s and 1990s, and it was actually the wine made from these grapes that helped to catch the attention of critics such as Robert Parker, which helped them to gain immediate commercial success because Bordeaux varieties were extremely popular at the time. And so while producers are extremely grateful for the contribution that those grapes provided, they're not quite as well suited to the terrain as indigenous varieties such as Carignan and Grenache. And so for that reason, they are being phased out a bit. Red wine certainly dominates production in Priorat. However, there is about 6 to 7% of white wine being made. That number is going up, however, as white wine is trending and becoming extremely popular in Priorat. So you can expect more white wines to be produced from Priorat in the future. Those wines are produced largely from either Grenache Blanc or Macabu, or blends of the two. Macabu is known as Vaira in Rioja, and it's Macabeo in other areas. I also tried an excellent Viognier from Val Yac, 
And there are some Rhone varietals, such as Rusan and Marsan, that are being planted as well. So if you get a chance to try one of those, definitely give them a shot. What are the wines from Priorat like? Well, I know many people are scared off by the high alcohol percentages in the wines. It's not uncommon for some of the Grenache-based wines to reach 16% or a little bit higher. However, these wines are often very, very well balanced, largely due to the acidity that's present. They also tend to have some intriguing minerality to the wines. I know that some people think this is nonsense, but to those people, definitely try a wine like a Chablis and tell me that you don't get sort of a chalky or rocky descriptor in that wine. Pre-Rod is the same, and due to the Licorea soils, there's often an intriguing minerality in these wines as well. Similarly, with the Grenache-based wines, they often contain at least some percentage of Carignan, which helps to add some acidity and balance to those wines as well. Why are the prices so high in Priorat? Well, I know everyone likes to compare Priorat wines to Spanish wines such as Rioja and say that they're extremely expensive, and for that reason they will just get Rioja instead. I'm certainly a fan of Rioja as well, but I think a better comparable for Priorat would be Chateauneuf de Pop or the Southern Rhone rather than Rioja. In Rioja, for example, the growing conditions are far more favorable and Tempranillo produces very large crops. So for that reason, you can get far higher yields in Rioja than you can in Priorat. As mentioned, due to the extremely inhospitable soils, in Priorat you get very, very low production and very low yields, and it's extremely hard to produce fruit. Just by way of an example, I'll again point to Valiox Mastellarosa. This is a wine that's produced from vines that are 110 years old. It takes an incredible seven vines to produce just one bottle of wine, and only 1,600 bottles are produced, even in a good vintage. You can compare this to a wine from Bordeaux. A Bordeaux producer might be producing tens of thousands of cases, and yet that wine may sell for $600 or more. That's true, even though those wines from Bordeaux may average only 30 to 50 years of age, compared to 110 or more in Priorat. And so in Priorat, you can definitely sometimes get something that's extremely special, especially from these historic centenary vineyards. Priorat also recently came out with a classification system that's more analogous to Burgundy than Bordeaux. Uh, with respect to the classification in Priorat, there are four different categories of wines. The first category, or the lowest level of classification in Priorat, is V de Villa. To be called a V de Villa wine, the grapes for the wine have to come from one of 12 subregions in Priorat. If they do, the producer can use the phrase V de Villa on the label. An example would be the Val Yac Pereira wine. These are early drinking wines that are available at lower price points than some of the more highly regarded wines. They're often from younger vines that were planted within the last 10 to 20 years. The second category is V de Paracha. These are areas that are known for their terrain, geography, and climate. It's similar to a Ludi in France. A third classification in Priorat is Vinia Classificata. This is a wine from a single vineyard of particular merit within a Paracha. It's analogous to a Premier Cru. The fourth and most prestigious category in Priorat is Grand Vinia Classificata. These are wines that are produced from a single vineyard of exceptional quality located within a Paracha. This category is analogous to Grand Cru. There's only a few of them currently, so it's extremely difficult to achieve this classification. With that by way of background, we're ready to get into the wine recommendations. If you're unfamiliar with Priorat wines, these six wines will help to get you started. And if you're looking for top older vintages in the secondary market, be sure to keep your eye out for 2010, 2013, and 2016, all of which are outstanding. The first wine recommendation for Priorat is Finca Dofi from the highly regarded producer Alvaro Palacios. This is a single vineyard wine that comes from vines that are about 20 years old. It's primarily Grenache, about 90% or so, with about 8-9% to Carignan, and oftentimes a little bit of white wine included in the blend. These vines are planted on slate soils at about 300 meters altitude. The tannins are noticeable in this wine, so if you're going to try to enjoy it young, be sure to do so with food. The great thing about this wine is it's collectible and an excellent representation of Priorat wine. However, it cost a small fraction of the Palacios La Hermita wine, which is one of the most exclusive wines throughout Priorat and oftentimes costs $1,500 or more. La Hermita is a Gran Vina Classificata wine, 
which is one of the very few wines to achieve that highest classification in Priorat. And it's produced from vines that are more than a century old. So certainly if you get a chance to try this wine, I highly recommend it, but it's definitely cost prohibitive. The second top wine that I'm recommending comes from Claude de Labac. Claude de Labac was one of the original pioneers in Priorat, and they've been making wine in the exact same blend since the late 1980s. Specifically, they use 35% Grenache, 35% Cabernet Sauvignon, 10% Syrah, 10% Merlot, and 10% Carignan in this blend. And so the vintage to vintage variation would be attributable mostly to the climate and not to anything in the winemaking process or the fruit that's in the blend. This particular wine comes from fruit that's in seven different vineyards in the Gratiops area. They age this wine for a substantial period of time before they release it. In fact, the current release is the 2010, which I recently had the opportunity to taste. This wine sells for about $95, 95 euros in Europe, and this is one that you can get directly from the producer's website. You can get some younger vintages, but you're still going to be paying the full price, so there's certainly no reason for you to do so. It's much better to let the producer do the aging and to get them when they're more ready to enjoy. For those in the United States, the producer does have a facility in California, which helps with shipping. If you're getting value from these picks, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. It really does help me out a lot. The next one that I'm recommending is one I mentioned earlier in this video, but it's the Val Yac Mas de la Rosa. This is 100% Carignan that comes from vines that were planted way back in 1910. This is one of the very few Gran Vina Classificata wines in Priorat, so it's at the very, very high end in terms of quality. This is a wine that's been trending up in price and now costs about $250 to $300 on release. So if you can find some older vintages in the secondary market, you'll definitely want to snatch those up because the price for the new releases has gone up. These 110-year-old vines are grown on very, very steep slopes or costers, and they have the Licorea soils or blue slate soils, which result in extraordinarily low yields for this wine. So there's only about 100 cases or a little bit more that's produced every vintage. This wine is aged in large oak foudres, and in the future they're going to be using about half concrete and half foudre. They also use very, very gentle punch down, which they do only about once a day. And for that reason, there's very effective tannin management for this wine. While it has adequate structure, it's not so tannic and structured that you can enjoy it when it's young. Nevertheless, it will age eight to 10 years or so. It's just a beautiful wine and one that I highly recommend if you want to taste some of the high end Priorat, but without paying $1,800 or more from the Alvaro Palacios La Hermita. The fourth top Priorat wine that I'm recommending comes from Mas Martinet. Specifically, it's the Mas Martinet Brew Priorat. This one has a very friendly price point of around $35 to $40, and it's widely distributed. This particular wine comes from a cooler area in Priorat, and so it's a little bit more fresh and elegant, and one that you can enjoy earlier. It certainly does have the telltale structure and minerality, but nevertheless, it's, it's one that's friendly and approachable even in its youth. This is a red blend of five varieties. The particular blend varies from year to year, but the 2018 vintage blend is representative. Specifically that year, there was 28% Grenache, 26% Syrah, 23% Carignan, 16% Merlot, and 17% Cabernet Sauvignon. This producer embraces organic and biodynamic principles. They add a little bit of sulfur to the wine at the end. Otherwise, this could even be potentially considered a natural wine. It's definitely an impressive wine and a wine of character, especially for this price point of only about $40 or so. The next top Priorat wine that I'm recommending comes from Clomogador, and I'm recommending their flagship Clomogador wine. This is one that sells for around $90 to $100 and is often one of the better wines that's released each year. It's a consistent wine and one that's very collectible. Clomogador was one of the original pioneers in Priorat back in the 1980s. René Barbier Sr. from Clomogador was one of the original catalysts, certainly, to help get things started. This has been a family business, and René Sr. transitioned the winemaking responsibilities to René Barbier Jr. a number of years ago, and another one of René Sr.'s sons is responsible for the viticulture. Grenache and Carignan make up about 75% of this wine, and the rest of it is Syrah and Cabernet Sauvignon. Clomogador is known for embracing organic principles, and they're also big fans of biodiversity. I recently toured the vineyards, and they had chickens in the vineyards and also sheep to control the weeds. In addition, they grew plants such as olives and nut trees throughout the vineyard, 
just to increase the biodiversity. Really a very impressive operation. And again, this is one that sells for about $90 to $100, depending on where you can find it. The next top line that I'm recommending from Priorat is also another one that's very friendly on the wallet. This one can be found for about $35 or so. Specifically, I'm talking about the Scaladay Cartosha. This wine is typically 80 to 85% Grenache, with the rest being Carignan. This wine is aged in stainless steel and concrete, and so you don't typically get too much structure with it. For that reason, it's one that has interesting purity of fruit and can be enjoyed fairly early on because it's not overly tannic. To ensure there is some sort of body and structure to the wine, however, they do include some whole cluster, which gives it some intriguing aromatics as well. This is a wine that you can enjoy on release, but yet can also age 12 to 14 years or so. I recently tasted the 2018 at the winery, and it was extremely impressive and a very high quality wine for this price point. If you enjoy pre route wines and want to try wines that are similar from another region, please be sure to check out my video on Chateauneuf-du-Pas.